Hello and welcome back to Maker's Muse. This is Angus and in this video I'll be going through the latest flash print software for the Flashforge Dreamer. So if you have a Flashforge Dreamer you owe it to yourself to get the latest version of their flash print software. Things have improved massively since uh, all the generations of the software but I've noticed the English version of the site doesn't actually have the latest version so I'm going to leave this link in the description where you can get flash print 3.4.1 so I'm just going to download it and once you've got it downloaded, just open up the zip file and install it as normal. It'll install over the top of your previous version. Like so. Yes, accept. I'm going to stick it in D. Uh, worth noting that the installation for the drivers tends to pop up behind the scenes like that. So, yes. And that's all there is to it. So let's launch version 3.4.1. So here's the latest version. It looks pretty familiar with the... Uh, older one if you've been uh, using that but they've changed a few things for the better so for those who are unfamiliar with the flash print software it's pretty much a clone of the older makerware makerbot software but they've added their own things and they've since improved it to be far superior to the older makerbot software so let's just uh, grab a file so go to load and I'm gonna grab a minion so it gives you a warning, model is off platform, do you want to put it on platform? Yes. And this is where they've started to improve things. So there's an error in the file. Being a Thingiverse file, of course, there's problems in it. Just That just happens with all Thingiverse files. I'm being a bit cynical. But now we have the option to repair the model. And yeah, it fixes any little, little holes there might be. And now it's repaired the model for printing, which is pretty nifty. So in terms of your controls, you have move. So under move, you select the model and you can place it on the center on the platform or you can move it up or down or left and right, depending on where you want it. This is important for dual color printing if you want to arrange two different STLs. But for now, I just want it on the platform and centered. Then you have rotation. So you can rotate it via these different uh, sort of rings or you can rotate it by 90 degree increments. So spin it around like this or like that. So this is important you know, because you... In my previous video, as I showed you, you want to print things in certain orientations for strength or appearance reasons. So let's leave that there. Scale. If you want him to be bigger or smaller, you can enter a scale. For example, 50% or 100%. And you can also increase it to the maximum, <laughs> which will increase it to the largest size it can be on the build platform. Let's just reset scaling. And extruder. So you can select, as you know, with the Flash Wars Dreamer, you have two extruders, left and right. So you can select to use the right extruder or left and it will color code it to suit. So that's pretty much as it always has been, but the latest changes are in the support menu. So let's go to support. And now we have various options. So support options, tree-like or linear. So, so these are two different types of support for those experienced with the uh, mesh mixer software tree like is what mesh mixer does for support so let's do auto support and see what it looks like personally i am not a fan of support structure in this type it doesn't really work in my opinion it tends to get knocked over by the extruders and yeah just fail unfortunately although that's my experience you may have different opinions of it but anyway i don't really like it so let's just clear that uh what i do prefer is linear support so let's go to that and auto support for linear And for those who have Simplify 3D, this looks pretty familiar. It's editable supports with linear support type. So we can now go in and delete supports we don't want. So delete. And we can get rid of supports under the eye, for example. We might not want support there. And that's pretty cool for a free bit of software, I must say. You know, it is a bit tedious. You have to click lots of times, blah, 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 blah. Um, but also, for example, if you want to support something in just a small area, like if I just only want to support the hands, for example, I can go in and build up support just for those hands, like so. But let's just say I do want to do auto supports and I'm happy with how it generates it, so auto supports. You'll note there is no option to change support threshold, it's just set to a certain uh, number, I think it's 45, but I'm not sure. And you can't change it, unfortunately. Well, not yet, anyway. So I'm happy with that. I'll go back and it will save the supports into the file. So they're now uneditable. Which is fine, but if you want to change them, you have to then re-import the file and start again. But 
that's fine. So I'm happy with that, and we can go to print. So you notice it says machine type, Flashforge Dreamer. Well, this is important now because Flashforge have a few different types of machines. So if we go to print machine type, we now have the Finder, which is a new fairly low cost, small 3D printer, or the Guider, which I believe is an SLA, but I could be wrong. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so now it's important to note which machine you've chosen. It also prompts this when you first install it as well. I had uninstalled it, so it didn't prompt me on that, but yeah, so uh, notice Creator Pro is now completely non-supported at all. Uh, you cannot use Creator Pro with the Flash Print software. They've pretty much washed their hands of it, which is fair enough. It's an older machine and, you know, got to move on, I guess. So got the Flash Wars Dreamer selected and we got a print. And also worth noting that the slicing engine you cannot change anymore. Before, you used to have either Skyforge or slicer to choose between now it's just flashforge slicer or ff slicer whatever they call it you cannot change it so in terms of other settings nothing's really changed here you can change between abs or pla presets but really you can change any temperature you want under the drop downs so you notice the first layer height's 0.3 that's because the first layer can be a little bit more forgiving if it's a thicker layer height than a finer layer height so it lets you change that uh shells that's how many times it goes down the outside so perimeter two is good Four is good if you want to be really strong. Top solid layers, again, three is fine. If you go any finer, you might start seeing the honey coming through the top layers, if you're not careful. Infill, how dense it is. 15 is a good medium setting. Speed, don't change these. The flash streamer can't really run faster than this, in my opinion, or it just shakes itself apart. And temperatures, as I said, you can change these to suit. 105 is a bit too hot for their little platforms they come with, little blue sheets. So I would go to 90, to be honest. And others is the cooling fan. Just leave that in auto. That's fine. Also of note is wall and vase mode. Vase is when you get a file like a cylinder and it cuts the top off and just prints the side walls as a single wall and that will override anything you have here. So that's a very special case. And wall will build a wall along the part to help with any sort of dags coming out of the second extruder. But I'm going to turn that off for now so uh, don't confuse things. And of course you want support on so I'm going to choose right extruder in this case and say OK, and save the G-code. Yes, replace it, because I've already saved it before, and let it do its thing. So the slicing speed in the latest flash prints, not too bad, it's a little bit faster than it used to be, but still nowhere as fast as Simplify 3D, unfortunately. And here is our finished file, sliced and ready to go for printing. So one of the things I do like about flash print is it shows you the G-code in quite a nice way before you commit to printing, and not many other slicers do that apart from Simplify 3D. Cura does it, but it doesn't look as nice. And yeah, it's actually a really nice viewer for your G-code before you commit. So I can drag the slider all the way down to the start. And here you'll notice, and this is something that, in my opinion, makes it better than Simplify 3D just, and it would be a really easy feature to change in Simplify 3D if the guy's are listening. The extruder for the left, the left extruder doing the raft, is a different color. And the right extruder is another color. So it lets you really easily debug which extruder you've committed to which task. Uh, Simplify 3D instead shows how fast the movement speeds are, so it shows a really nice gradient, but it would be really, really nice for this feature to be an option. So you turn a tick box on and say color by extruder instead of having color by speed. So yeah, that's definitely a feature I would like to request for the latest Simplify 3D. But yeah, it it does the supports pretty well. Uh, it's not as good as some other support like the Up or Simplify 3D. It's still, if you can see here, kind of blocky. So it's not going to pull away as easily. But really, it's not too bad. Um, and it does print pretty well. So yeah, once that's done, you can just commit it to your 3D printer and be ready to go. So that's Flash Print version 3.4.1. Uh, if you guys have a Flash Forge, I hope this helps you. And if you, you're looking to possibly buy a Flash Forge, I hope this helps inform your decision. Any questions, please do not hesitate to ask me in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you guys soon here on Maker's Muse. See you later.